Welcome back to the channel. So today I have a very tall plant that I'm going to be replanting out of its nursery pot and putting it into this concrete planter that I make. Um, if you're interested in, in how to make these planters um, in pots, I have a video on my channel showing how I make them. So check that out down below. Um, the main reason why um, I'm transplanting this Madagascar palm today is because it has gotten so tall. I measured it just a few minutes ago. On camera, you can't even see the, the top of it. Bring it down a little bit. So I measured just a few minutes ago and to the top of the trunk is 34 inches from the top of the soil to the top of the trunk. And then if I measure all the way to the top of the leaves, it's 43 inches tall. So the problem that I'm having with this plant is because it is so narrow and tall that sometimes when the wind blows, it catches all these leaves and topples the whole plant over. So I want to put it in a heavier pot like this concrete pot and that should give it a better uh, heavier base to uh, keep the wind from causing problems for it. Um, now, these Madagascar palms, they do have very large and sharp thorns all the way up the trunk that you can see. I have had this tree for three years now. When I first purchased it, it was this tall. And then the first year I had it, it grew up to here. And then last year grew up to here. And then so far this year, it has really taken off and grown from there on upwards. Uh, in just the last maybe four months, it has really taken off. So I know the plant is very healthy. I'm going to put a couple pairs of gloves on my hands and possibly wrap it with a, uh, a towel also to try to uh, safely, for both the plant and myself, transport it from its nursery pot into this pot. Now, these pots that I make, they do have drainage holes in the bottom which is very important. This is in the cactus family. So I just take a couple pieces of normal window screen and stick over top of those two drainage holes. And then I'm going to put a little bit of my soil into the bottom of these of this pot. Now my soil mix is my standard soil mix um, that I use for most of my bonsai trees and it's also really good for succulents. So it'll be perfect for this Madagascar palm. It's made up of about 60 to 70% turfus, which is the orange baked clay, and about 30 to 40% um, composted mulch. And if you can't find composted mulch, you could also use pine bark mini nuggets. It's sold in the big box stores, and that gives you uh, some water retention for your plant, but also a lot of aeration to the roots so you don't get the root rot in both your succulents and of course in your bonsai trees. I also use that for my desert roses also. So this is a, a good multi-purpose um, soil for bonsai, succulents of different sorts. Uh, maybe just a little more. Let me put some gloves on. Now, this these Madagascar palms in the wild, they grow up to 24 feet tall. Um, supposedly, indoors, they top off about six feet tall. I hope this guy does stop growing at about six feet tall for me because the house that I'm in is uh only has eight foot tall ceilings so but i guess i have at least a few more years before uh i have to deal with that if that does become a problem all right that feels kind of kind of good i think i'll just wrap it with this just to for safety for the plant. 
The gloves are more safety for me, but this tail might be more safety for the plant itself. All right. Squeezing the pot right now to see if I can get the root ball to slide on out. Might be a better bet if I just cut the size of this pot. Okay. Since I'm having some difficulty getting the plant out of this pot and I don't want to damage it, I'm just going to take a box cutter and since this is just a plastic nursery pot, I'm going to carefully watch where my fingers are, but just cut down the sides of this pot in a couple or a few locations. And that will allow me to get this large palm safely out of its current pot. All right, let's try this again. go we can see the roots it's obviously root bound I'm not going to disturb the roots much I just want to take a good look at them and you can see them on camera on the bottom they look very healthy I'm gonna do more of a slip potting repotting where basically you just slip the plant out of its current pot and slide it right into its new pot. I do have a little bit too much soil. I think I'd be happier with just a little bit less. And I'm just uh, making the soil that's in this pot pretty much level, that way there's no air pocket underneath the root ball. Yes, that looks great right there. I'm going to leave the towel on him until I get fully done in case I have to rearrange it at all. But I believe I can take my gloves off. The gloves work good. My hands uh, are nice and safe. I'm going to pour my soil mix around the perimeter of the pot. And 
take my trusty chopstick that I use for my bonsai trees and just help work that soil mix down into the pot. Once again, to make sure that there's no air pockets. I will say this is one of my favorite plants that I have. Um, the nursery that I purchased it at um, was in Florida, South Florida, and uh, they had a large one growing in the ground. I have no idea. I should have asked uh, how old that plant was, but it was every bit of 14 feet tall, and the top of it had a bunch of branches coming off. It was an absolutely beautiful plant, and then they had a handful of about 14 to 16 inch tall ones like this one um, that I chose from. Uh, seeing that uh, large plant made the sale. As soon as I saw that, I knew I wanted one. I had never seen a Madagascar, Madagascan palm before up until then. good to go on vacation in different places and you get to find new plants and new things that you're you've never seen before and you get to try them out all right I'm gonna take this off no harm to the plant no harm to my hands I am going to use my slow release fertilizer Osmocote Plus. It's the same fertilizer that I use for my desert roses and I use for my bonsai trees. It could be used for any type of indoor or outdoor plants. The reason why I like to use Osmocote Plus uh, slow release fertilizer is because each time that you water your plant, a little bit of the nutrients goes out of this, uh, these little beads of fertilizer and goes down into the soil and you don't have to remember if you uh, fertilized the plant two weeks ago, a month ago, or when it was, and you really can't over fertilize because it's slow release. So I'm going to bring the plant down now. So hopefully you can see it. Looks very good, very healthy. It's a very beautiful plant, heavy. That's what I wanted though. So there it is. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button to push this video out on YouTube's algorithm so more people can uh, see the information. If you do have any uh, questions or comments, leave me a comment down below. I'd like to hear from you guys and I'll answer any questions that I get. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.